Hello everyone. Uh, as you know, several years ago, Adobe announced that Flash will be officially shutting down in 2020, this year. Uh, so I want to share my experiences with Flash and why this happens very briefly. Uh, first, please understand that I'm not an analyst, not a historian, so this is totally based on my experiences. So as you have watched my channel, my main contents are focused on Adobe Animate CC these days. If you are new to Animate CC, you might be wondering why the files you create from Animate CC have .fla extensions. Why? In order to explain this, we need to know the brief history of Flash. Back in the 90s, when I started studying web design, I started learning HTML, as you can imagine, uh, using simple text and BB edit. Then, Dreamweaver came out in the market as a WYSIWYG HTML editor by Macromedia. What you see is what you get. Let me talk about Macromedia a little bit. In my memory, there were two big competitors in the graphic design software market, Adobe and Macromedia. From my understanding, Adobe was dominating the digital imaging field such as image retouching, digital illustration, digital video production, and desktop publishing. Of course, there was a Quark Express, but um, uh, we're not going to discuss about that today. So Photoshop, Illustrator, PageMaker, InDesign, Premiere, After Effects, and so on. Macromedia's products were more about digital interactive production, such as interactive kiosk design, CD-ROM presentation, web and web animation, etc. Director, Fireworks, Dreamweaver, Flash, and Freehand. So at that time, my favorite application for animation was Macromedia Director, using Lingo. Director was a great program to produce interactive CD-ROM title kiosk design, and short motion graphics. And Lingo was a great programming language. However, animations that created by Director was not ideal for web. Since Director employed bitmap images only, file size was pretty big. Even though I made a very simple interactive animation from Director, web browsers such as Internet Explorer and Netscape Navigator needed plugin file installed to play it. Shockwave player. Uh, it was not a big deal uh, because there was no mobile device at that time. Now Flash. You may have known as Adobe Flash. It used to be Macromedia Flash. Flash brought web-based video, animation, and interactivity into ubiquity. It allowed designers and developers alike to make a new kind of rich content that would work on any computer browser. All files were saved as a flash file with the .fla extensions for web use. .fla files need to be published as .swf file. Let me make it easier to understand. For example, .jpg is a web file format of .psd file in Photoshop. In the same way, the same concept, .swf is a web file format of .fla in Flash. Flash was insanely popular due to following reasons. One, vector-based animation, which means it creates really smooth and dynamic animation. Number two, dramatic file compression, meaning way smaller file size and faster downloading speed. Number three, <coughs> such a powerful language, ActionScript 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0 for dynamic animation and interactivity. I really spent a lot of time for studying uh, ActionScript uh, 1 and 2, kind of similar, ActionScript 3.0, uh, it changes the, a lot in terms of structure, but um, it is still pretty powerful language. Number four, cross-browser and cross-platform, meaning it uh, works on any, any device, any stations. So there were lots of Flash-related online communities and events. Shocked site of the day was one of my most favorite sites and also there were lots of flash related applications such as uh, Swift 3D. I thought that flash is the future of web design. 
As a competitor, Adobe released Go Live and Live Motion, but they couldn't defeat Macromedia Streamweaver and Flash. Flash was still strong. One day, Adobe purchased Macromedia in 2005, and Apple introduced a smartphone in 2007. Mobile device, smartphones, changed the game. Apple announced to stop supporting Flash components on their mobile device, such as iPad and iPhone, and try to establish a new platform based on HTML5. There were numbers of reasons why. Number one, Flash. It required plugin file to view the Flash-based animation. Number two, most mobiles can't play Flash animation. Number three, SEO. Search engine optimization can't index Flash websites. Number four, there were security risks. And number five, it takes more battery life. Adobe kept maintaining Flash as Adobe Flash while developing HTML5-based Flash-like animation application. That is, Adobe Edge Animate. I truly loved it. Edge Animate was able to produce vector-based animation as Flash did and did not require a plugin because it was based on HTML5, meaning animation and interactivity you created in Edge Animate could be viewed and played in any mobile device, while Flash's web file format was .swf, shockwave file, Edge Animate's file format was .oam that we used to publish for web. Adobe released several beta versions and official versions uh, and stopped developing Edge Animate. While Edge Animate was developed and disappeared, Flash was evolved from Adobe Flash to Adobe Flash Professional and finally Adobe Animate CC today. Adobe Flash Professional and Adobe Animate CC are a combination of a Flash and Edge Animate in my experiences. That's why Animate CC offers two different types of platform. One, HTML5 Canvas, and two, ActionScript 3.0. And that's why I always recommend to use the HTML5 Canvas in my tutorials so people can view your animations on any device. Animate CC files can be exported as video files as well. That means you can cooperate Animate CC file with other digital video production applications, such as Adobe Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Final Cut Pro. Also, Animate CC files can be saved as animated GIF files as well. I'm planning to produce more tutorials about this matter. Okay. I have talked about my experiences with Macromedia and Adobe products briefly. Here is my summary. Some of you may recall old days. I hope this video is helpful. Thanks for watching and see you next time.